It's good to see you today. Hope you're doing well. We're going to be looking at Jesus turning the water to wine today. Our passage is, Though your sins be as scarlet. Pardon me, our hymn is, Though your sins be as scarlet. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. Though your sins be as scarlet, though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. They shall be as white as snow. Our hymn comes from John. <laughs> Keep mixing them up. Our passage comes from John chapter 2, verse 1. On the third day there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Now both Jesus and his disciples were invited to the wedding. When they ran out of wine, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. Jesus said to her, Woman, what does your concern have to do with me? My hour is not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Whatever he says to you, do it. Now there were set there six water pots of stone, according to the manner of purification of the Jews, containing twenty or thirty gallons apiece. Jesus said to them, Fill the water pots, and they filled them up to the brim. And he said to them, Draw some out now, and take it to the master of the feast. And they took it. And when the master of the feast had tasted the water that was made wine, and did not know where it came from, but the servants who had drawn the water knew, the master of the feast called the bridegroom. And he said to him, Every man at the beginning sets out the good wine, and when the guests have well drunk, then the inferior. You have kept the good wine until now. This beginning of signs Jesus did in Cana of Galilee and manifested his glory, and his disciples believed in him. All right, let's scroll back up and make a few points about our passage and as we think about what the Lord is able to do. So Mary comes to him. They have no wine. What the Lord can do is to change a lack to surplus. Right? They've run out, they have ran out, they have run out, they're out. <laughs> Pardon me, I'm grammatically challenged, they're out. An absolute lack. But in the Lord our cup overfloweth. When the Lord makes the water into wine, and you have those stone vessels. And I believe we've, I've spoken about this before, trying not to make the same points. But they had those vessels, and I believe it was around 150, if I'm remembering correctly, 150 to 180, somewhere in that vicinity, gallons of wine that he ends up making. You think they had that much to begin with? No, probably not. They go from a lack to a surplus. You see it over and over again. And what it is, is it points to the Lord blessing us abundantly. We go from nothing to more than we need. More than we can imagine, I suppose, we should say. Another point we could make, though, imagine the embarrassment in verse 3. Perhaps you've been to a wedding that was catered, and imagine if the caterers run out of food or run out of punch, and they, there's no more. Imagine how embarrassed the family would be. Just imagine, imagine that. 
and how ashamed they would be. And what does the Lord do? He turns shame into honor. We come to him ashamed, and he gives us honor. He gives grace to the humble. He lifts them up. And it's just a wonderful, wonderful thing. And just think about how embarrassed they would have been. And of course, the spiritual application is how ashamed are we of sin? And that when we come to him as a sinner, and that we are suddenly heirs, heirs of the promise. Come to him as outsiders, suddenly we're insiders. Back to our passage. A little bit further down, something else the Lord does can be found in what the master of the feast says. Every man at the beginning sets out the good wine, and when the guests are well drunk, then the inferior. You have kept the good wine until now. In my notes, I put it like this. He changes, he changes the, the good to better as well. And that when we come to him, and you see this in Scripture, I understand all have sinned and come short of the glory. I understand that. You know, some of those, some of those individuals who are sinners are, are described as being good people. And it doesn't mean they're perfect, but that's the point. What does the Lord do? The Lord makes even the Lord makes even the good better. He makes the good even he makes even the good the best. I, I'm thinking of a passage, I believe it's in Hebrews, where it's con it's it's comparing and contrasting Sinai with Zion. And in thinking about the church, the spirits and, and just listen to the language, the spirits of just men made perfect. And it's just a wonderful picture. And that here with the water to wine, and I understand he didn't, he didn't make the wine wine, he made the water wine. But you might just think about, he could have made it, he could have made it the same wine. He could have made it taste exactly the same. He could have made it inferior, like the master of the feast was expecting. Right? He could have made it inferior to not throw anybody off, but he made it better. You might think about what the Lord has the power to change, because ultimately that's what the Lord has the power to do. He changes us as we come to him and as his words abide in us and we abide in him. And you have the transformation of the renewing of our mind. Appreciate you. Hope you have a good day. Join us tomorrow for another portion of our daily praise.